everyone. Uh, today's speaker is Mahu Shah. Uh, he graduated from, with a Bachelor's of Science from India and a Master's of Science from the University of Florida, both in electrical engineering. Beginning in 2000, he began his work for the InterSil Corporation, uh, designing ICs for power converters. And uh, since then, he's been working in, with uh, power technology designing ICs. Uh, he also graduated with an MBA from the University of Chapel Hill. Uh, let's welcome him. Thank you. So I'm going to start first uh, by asking a different question. Thanks, Michael. Um, anybody can guess what's happening here? Have you guys seen? It? <coughs> what time? Um, what kind of fishing is that? <coughs> Sorry? Spear yeah. When would you go in the sea to do this? So most of the time, what? what sorry? When you go late at night? Yeah. Or you light, yeah. What you do is when it's a high tide, um, they get on these poles and put a small light. that the so fish gets attracted to that light. And it, it has to be like a, a, da a dawn time. It's not completely dark because you can't see the fish then. But they are pretty good at uh, aiming the fish. and. I picked it up, uh, it was uh, one of the Bing picture, and I was like, huh, this is pretty cool. This is done in uh, southern India, but uh, mainly in Sri Lanka, which I have seen, uh, um, so it's pretty cool. All right, going back to our conversation. So there's gonna be a quiz at the end of this presentation, so I want everybody to concentrate. Uh, please, if you have a cell phone or a text, you, you can use it, but the quiz is gonna be tough one, so you better concentrate. Um, I'm going to cover a um, um, simple uh, control algorithm that um, I worked on uh, uh, as an IC designer. Um, I, uh, I do a lot of, uh, I've done 10 years of IC design, mainly designing ICs uh, for a notebook, uh, server, anything that's computer. Um, I've done some work in the charging the battery for a, like a, a, a notebook battery or a cell phone battery, uh, IC design, but not a whole lot but mainly anything related to the computer. Uh, so anything that's required in computer buck related is what my expertise have been. That's 10 years is pretty good. Uh, um, today's agenda, I'll uh, talk about a uh, little bit about international rectifier, what it is. Uh, some of you may or may not know what, what uh, international rectifier do. Uh, buck converter application, um, just uh, give you an overview. And then I'll dig into what uh, conventional voltage mode buck converter looks like. Uh, um, some of, most of you probably know about it. I'll touch base that and then get on the simple um, constant on time scheme, which is really a simple scheme and uh, how it's going to help, uh, um, what are the benefits of it and how it overcomes the challenges of uh, voltage mode. Um, I have uh, some example of it, uh, um, IR3710, that's a released uh, part. You can go to international web. Uh, Rectifier's website and uh, pull up the data sheet for that so you can understand what the, what's going on. A little bit summary, and I'll definitely talk about, many of you will be interested in knowing what a uh, uh, university program looks like and what are the other career opportunities that IR has. The group, uh, I'll t little, tell you a little bit more about the group at the end of it uh, when we talk about this, uh, what we do in, in, in RTP, but IR as a company is a pretty big uh, company, so if you're not restricted, just staying in the Research Triangle Park, there are a lot more opportunities. Um, this is probably one of the oldest semiconductor companies still actively working towards uh, developing more new uh, semiconductor. It's, uh, it started in eight, uh, 1947, and uh, the, the guy who started uh, is um, Eric Lee, uh, Alex Lee, Eric Lido, and he's still the chairman. He's 94, I think 95 now. He's still the chairman of the um, company. He's, uh, 40, he ran the company for 48 years. And then he handed it over to his son for next 12 years. So now we have a new CEO for the last two years. Uh, you probably know a lot more about IR. Um, they, um, I think IR got, um, um, they, they started obviously in the rectifier uh, business doing diodes, but they got really big kick when they, when they came up with the hex facts. That's probably a lot of people in the industry know IR is very well not for HexFed. 
and they have added a lot more products since then. So it, they are very specialized in three terminal device, but they are getting into the IC business uh, for over the last few years. And <coughs> so IR has set their goal to help uh, energy efficiency. Uh, it's a it's lot of other market, not just uh, MOSFET, which is a three terminal, but going after a lot of other market, automotive, industrial, consumer, data com, and uh, high reliability. Yeah, here is uh, some of the application that uh, um, we, we address, uh, mainly motors and lighting and IT systems, as well as uh, um, LED displays, uh, we are, we're trying to get into that market as well. Let me touch base on the product line overview, which is the uh, uh, main thing. I, I'm going really fast through these slides. I'll slow down when the technical content comes. Um, this is the uh, pro uh, product line that I work on, uh, which is enterprise power. Um, this is uh, going after the uh, computer market, like I said, that that's, has been my expertise. Um, servers, um, storage, networks, um, they are any kind of uh, uh, notebooks, game station, anything that's, a, uh, that's you can hold it in your hand, uh, and anything that's called computer is what we, uh, we focus on. Here is an example of a server board that uh, currently IR has uh, 86 devices. Uh, this is uh, uh, VR 11.1, which is uh, if somebody follows the Intel platform, but they have VR is voltage uh, uh, regulation platforms. And uh, uh, they have, uh, um, they come up with VR1, 2, now they are at 11. VR12 is the next generation that's coming up. IR does uh, not only provide the FETs, which is their, have been there strong, but they provide a lot more ICs, that, which is surprising for a lot of people. But IR has been doing the ICs uh, for the last 10 years and been very successful doing that. So just wanted to give you guys an overview of what, uh, so out of 45 I, uh, ICs, there were several ICs that were designed uh, either by me or my group, which I work in uh, uh, Research Triangle Park here. Obviously, we don't, we don't design FETs here, but we use our FETs, uh, IAS FETs. So. All right, so buck converters, um, it's, it's basically you can do the uh, step down, uh, DC, DC. Um, uh, it uses two switches. Um, mostly power MOSFETs in this case, uh, an inductor, magnetics, which is not my field, but I, I got to use it every day, <laughs> and the capacitor or capacitors, depending upon what you need. Um, it's probably the most efficient way to get um, um, DC output voltage, low, uh, lower output than your input. Um, you could use uh, uh, other ways to get the lower output voltages. You probably heard just to put a resistor divider. That works and then put a LDO, uh, low dropout. Uh, but the, um, getting a, a self-regulating uh, lo lower output voltage uh, from a higher input voltage is, uh, is uh, DC, uh, uh, buck converter is probably one of the most efficient way to get it. Um, typical application in computers, like I said, that, that's where we're going to focus in today, um, is been uh, uh, 12 to 24 volt DC. Um, this battery packs that you get here, it's either three or four cell in the notebook. Um, all your desktop or servers that you have, it comes from wall, wall. They, they convert that uh, to 12 volts or 20, uh, 12 volts or, or uh, 20 volts DC in the server um, business. So 12 volts or 24 is, I would say, for the most application. And then obviously you take that and convert it into anywhere between 0.5 to 2.5. And you're going to drive either your processor, um, if you have it, uh, two or four um, processors, uh, depending upon that. Um, maybe I should have mentioned the load current. Uh, it goes somewhere between, uh, um, if, if you're running processor, it goes somewhere between 30 to maybe 150 amps, depending upon what kind of processor, what frequency you're running. Um, if, if it's a memory, it's about uh, maybe 10 amps. Graphics, it's uh, somewhere in between 20 to 30 amps kind of range. Um, here is a <coughs> here is a um, when the S1 turns on, that's when the the current charges in the inductor, and then um, when S1 turns on, 
you put the V in across the inductor, inductor charges, output voltage uh, start going up. And when, when uh, S2 turns on, when inductor in the current in the inductor goes down. And uh, this is uh, the time that the S1 is on versus S2 is on. It's called duty cycle. This is your total period and duty times the period is your on time. Um, the whole idea is to uh, create uh, output voltage, which is proportional to the input voltage. And D is the, what, what you're looking for. So you, we design ICs to get to that D, which is to do, let's say if you want a 10, uh, t uh, 10 volts in and you got to have one volt out, your D is going to be 0.1. So 10% of the time, you're turning on the high side. The rest of the 90% of the time, the low side is on, which is S2 and S1. Um, let me just uh, get you back on the, the voltage mode, which is a traditional scheme that uh, uh, we have been using for a long time. Um, so <clears throat> first thing uh, in, the, in the traditional scale, you, you, the, the PWM is identical to S when we talk about. Um, the re, uh, pulse width modulated uh, is identical to S1. So uh, S2 is just uh, inverse of S1, which we saw on the previous chart here. S2 is basically inverse of S1. So either you turn on S1 or S2. You do not want both of them to be on at the same time. Otherwise, you're shorting your input voltage to ground. Um, <coughs> So PWM is generated right there. How do you start the PWM? You start the PWM when the clock goes down. And then when you turn off the PWM, well, you turn off the PWM when the reset comes through, which is this ramp signal and the comp. Let me talk a little bit about clock, ramp, and comp. Um, comp is the um, uh, error signal that's generated by looking at the output voltage, which is a feedback signal which is coming back from the output and your reference, which is some internal reference uh, you can provide externally or you can create inside the IC. Most cases, a lot of ICs now create an internal reference. Your error signal comes through, and then the ramp is the second one that you compare with to decide when to turn it off. And the ramp comes through um, uh, uh, some kind of oscillator that provides a current in the capacitor. Um, this is very simple implementation uh, um, in the sense that uh, there is a lot more complexity uh, to do inside the IC. Uh, I want to give an overview of that. So one more time, set, reset, because uh, there's going to be a quiz. Set, reset, uh, set is when you start the PWM. Reset is when you stop the PWM. And then you take this PWM, which is an internal signal, and do something with it, um, gate driver signal, which I'm not going to talk here. But that's going to drive your uh, S1 and S2. So we just talk about how to create this D times T signal, which is on, which how to turn on this one and that one. It's going to be created using that PWM right there. So like I talk about, uh, so it's, it's basically, um, uh, let me go a step back one more time here. Um, so you would need to, in, in order to design this IC, in order to create your PWM signal, you would need something called error amplifier. And then you'll need another oscillator uh, and few capacitor switch, flip-flop, you know, uh, and a comparator. So it's not too bad. Uh, it's constant frequency. Uh, every time PWM is created on the falling edge of clock, like I said, so the uh, PWM goes high every time the, uh, the falling edge of the clock. When you start your ramp, and this one, PWM, is terminated when air amplifier output, is, which is your comp, crosses the ramp, correct? Um, so here is one example, IR3640. This is another part number. Um, that's also release IR part. Um, the one on the left side is the block diagram. Uh, there is a lot more complexity, like I said. It's uh, the main discussion I talk about is here, and it's not trivial to design the, the IC, specifically the air amplifier part and the oscillator, because both of them requires a lot more coordination. You need to also, because this is constant frequency, you need to trim the frequency. Uh, uh, that means you, you need a lot more uh, accuracy in the frequency. That means it's difficult to do the oscillator. So it's difficult IT, IC design. Um, and the other difficulty comes in this particular one, which we haven't touched base 
is that this loop here, this is application. So this is inside the IC. This is the block. Inside the IC, um, so this is your S1 and S2. It's your inductor right there. That's your capacitor. When you send the signal back into the air amplifier input, which is right there, these are the two. This is your comp signal. You need to do something called a compensation. You need to uh, do a loop compensation. And that's not very easy. Um, um, it's not easy because it's going to depend on a lot of factors. It depends on the type of inductor you choose, type of capacitors you have, what kind of load you have. So it's not an easy thing to do. So two main challenges, just remember this. It's difficult IC design. Air amplifier is not e easy to design. Um, just give you over ballpark. Um, it takes about a couple months to do a good air amplifier. Okay, And probably all this circuit can be done in two months, too. So air amplifier is not that easy to design. Just wanted to give you guys why it's difficult. Um, so let me introduce the constant on time. Um, this is uh, um, very um, d different than uh, the voltage model. First thing you notice is that um, there, uh, first thing you notice is there is no more clock now. Um, you're looking at the feedback or output signal, and you're comparing with the reference. Um, you also notice there is no comp signal anymore. Comp is also gone. So no clock and no, uh, no air amplifier, the two IC design challenges that I talk about. Well, um, so how does this one work? So whenever uh, um, the idea of the constant on time is, like I said, you create an on time pulse which is constant all the time. So your PWM or S1 is always constant. It's not changing. Uh, every time you turn it on, it's going to be on for that time. Well, when do you turn it on? Well, whenever you look at your output voltage or your feedback signal, and it, when it drops below a reference, pick a reference voltage where you want to regulate. When it drops below that, you turn it on. So you turn it on um, whenever, uh, um, whenever the feedback voltage drops below reference, and you turn it off for after the constant on time is over. But your frequency is not going to be constant because now you depend heavily on what the output looks like. An output could have a higher load, then you need to turn on more often. Output could have a lower load, then you need to turn, it, turn, on, turn on for less uh, number of times, correct? Um, here is an implementation in the block diagram. And, um, I'll spend a little bit more time here. <coughs> so first thing we don't see in this block diagram, air amplifier or <coughs> the oscillator. Those are the two things that I talk about. Um, you, st you start your PWM. I always like to go from the backwards than going forward. You notice that because it's easier to think like that. So the PWM is, goes high when set signal is uh, go high. When does the set go high? Well, whenever the feedback, which is your uh, uh, output voltage, when it drops below your reference voltage, which is 0.5, your set goes high, correct? Well, set goes high, PWM starts. PWM starts, this uh, switch is going to turn off, and you're going to start charging the capacitor, which is your cap node here. When does the reset comes in? Well, the reset comes in when the cap reaches to some voltage. In this case, we selected one volt right there. So <coughs> when reset comes, the cap uh, the PWM goes low, correct? Your PWM goes low. This inverter flips this guy, shorts the cap, and the V cap signal goes low. And that's, that's your uh, PWM signal created. How does the constant on time came? Well, the constant on time came because this current that we created, which is T on, IT on, is, uh, is constant and it's charging a constant capacitor. So the current will not change unless um, uh, this, this, this on time will not change. It's always going to go from 0 to 1 volt. This thing is always going to be constant. That's how you decide the pulse width. All right? One more time. You start your pulse when feedback goes below reference, correct? And you keep it on for until the constant on time. So same thing. Um, now, a little bit of equation right there. Um, so your T on, which we looked at uh, previously, it's a CDV over the current. I is equal to CDV dt. Um, by the way, when I went to work right after the school, this is a good story. Um, 
I had a, a very senior designer who I work with, and uh, he would uh, he has about 40 years of design experience, so he was extremely senior. And uh, he would walk in my office and he'll write three equations, just three equations. Every time any problem that came across design time, he'll write three equations: uh, v is equal to i r, i is equal to c d v d t, and v is equal to l d i d t. Three equations, and he'll solve any problem. Just wanted to share that story. But he, would, yeah, I mean, he he's been in the industry for a long time. Um, so here, um, on time, I said it's constant. It's a C times dV times it on. The reason I selected uh, dV, which is the voltage the capacitor is going to charge up to one volt, it's, it makes my equation simple. On time, like we said, it's going to be duty times the period, which is the WM signal, correct? And the C is going to be constant inside the IC. And the T on, which I'm creating in this case, uh, is um, T on is V in over the resistor feed forward. And uh, um, I can, um, if, if you are interested in that, um, I, uh, we, we can go into a little more detail in why I selected uh, V in over R R RFF. I could have selected any, any current, DC current. Uh, I selected a specific. It, um, if you solve for it, um, which is in this case, it becomes independent of um, your, your period or your frequency becomes independent of V in. You only have to worry about V out So when you, when you solve further. But here is your main equation, which is in steady state, you're always going to get a constant on time. So uh, let's talk about advantages. Uh, we looked at the voltage mode. We know the. So to, uh, like I said, uh, in the, uh, it's a simple control method. There is no more air amplifier needed. You, you are done with air amplifier. You don't need it anymore. Uh, you don't need any more oscillator, so design should go really fast. Uh, um, and then application, which is uh, for customer point of view, when you're designing this from the customer point of view, you, you don't have any compensation, and you reduce the components. Remember I showed you some compensation components. That's gone. So. Uh, and so that's the simplicity of it. Well, what are the other uh, benefits or um, do, we do, do we gain anything else other than? Well, with the constant on time, we were able to get more fast transient response whenever we had the load. And this was interesting because uh, um, our, we, um, conventionally, whenever you do a compensation, you can push the compensation bandwidth and get a good transient response. Um, with the constant on time, we were able to get a good fa uh, transient response when we compared with uh, with our voltage mode. And so, the other thing is, um, and I, I'll dig a little bit more, give you guys uh, guidance on what the DCM stands for. But at um, notebook applications, um, every keystroke that I make here, the com computer shuts down in between. It's it has gone that far away that uh, they call it S three, S four, and S five. So you, you do hibernation, you do sleep mode, I mean, computers gives you option. But they, um, in between every keystroke, basically your processor is shutting down. That, that's faster. Uh, and you need to bring it back up uh, uh, every so. And every time you kick, kick, it kicks in, and then it backs, up, backs it up. But um, so <clears throat> the light load efficiency really matters because you're running off on just on battery. There's nothing else. You're not connected to the wall. You want to run it light. Uh, 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 you, you, want to, you want to run your, your, your own system, not only just uh, processor, but you want to run your own system. You want to shut it down or have them the highest efficiency, even at the load when processor has really shut down or maybe need uh, 2 amps compared to 150 amps. You know? So that's, that's important. And I'll get into that. Uh, I have a few slides that talks about that. And when you get into DCM, um, there is a lot of, uh, 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 I think I have flipped this. Um, <laughs> I'll change that. CCM to DCM, the, the transition is not uh, trivial. It's not easy. If you want to do, if you want to get it to DCM, which is, which is basically dropping down your uh, frequency so low that you don't switch it ev every so. Uh, let's say you're running at 500 kilohertz. And you, you drop it down to less than a kilohertz. So you're not 
switching, your switching losses goes down really low. Okay? And I'll talk about that. So those are the four. Here is an example of it. Uh, uh, v in um, 3710 is the product that I use for give you guys uh, uh, some demonstration on how, how it can be done. Um, in this one, the VIN is three, th uh, 3 volts to 28 volts. V out range is 0.5 volts to 12 volts. Um, one volt, uh, one percent is a VREF accuracy. That means your output voltage is going to be regulated within a one percent, whatever the number. Um, um, let's say if it's V out, it's going to be within a one percent of uh, V out is well one volt. Then it's going to be within a one percent of that uh, number of one volt. Okay, any, and obviously, we are in business of making <laughs> fancy marketing features. Uh, you can program the switching frequency. Uh, you can adjust your overcurrent, and you can monitor the output. So here is the uh, block diagram inside, looking inside the IC. Um, the, the things that we talked about uh, earlier is your, here is your comparator. Uh, we, are not sh no, we have not shown a bunch of uh, stuff, but here is where you create uh, your on-time uh, uh, signal that the, the flip-flop and the other comparator is inside there. And that's what, it's really no oscillator, no amplifier. If you take anything from this presentation, just remember those two things, it's important. Everything else it will be okay. Um, here is the transient response uh, of the, uh, like, I, uh, like I said, uh, that it's uh, really nice. You can see, um, this is the window that, uh, so, so why, why does the transient response matter, correct? Uh, why, do, why do you have to have a, uh, why, why the, when the load, which is your output load here, when that steps, it going from, in this case, uh, maybe 2 amps to 10 amps load. Uh, when it, when it makes that transition, uh, why do you have to regulate the output voltage? Well, some of the processor, or uh, graphics chip, or uh, memory, they will shut down. They cannot take. Um, other thing, if this, uh, in this case, the, uh, this is your upper voltage. So you're looking at 50 millivolts per division, so it's very tiny uh, scope you have. Um, if it goes too low, it shuts down. If it goes too high, you will damage the processor. You don't want to do that. So regulating that matters. And what, um, when you have the, uh, like I said, if you're going to shut it down in between every keystroke, your processor is going to go from, in this case, I'm just showing 2 to 10 amps. This is memory application, but you could do it uh, in other application where it's going to go for 20 amps to 150 amps, and you got to maintain that. Um, so, in, in um, what happened when we had an increase in load, the output voltage start to go down. Well, as soon as the V out start to go down, we ended up increasing the frequency, and that's why we uh, we started putting more and more pulses to keep the V out to our regulated point, and that's why you see a good transient response in this. And in the other direction, when it notices that the V out is above your uh, set point, it shut down. There is no more pulses coming up. So in between, it was just steady state normally going. In this case, also steady state normally going. Whenever it saw the transient response, whenever the V out started to change, it came back and said, aha, I need to put more. more. So um, one way to do it uh, is, uh, a bit, uh, so I, I hit this bullet here, but the second one uh, is also important in the power supply design, is that you can regulate your voltage if you just put a huge capacitor bank, correct? Just put an infinite capacitor and you'll never have to, you charge it once and you're done. You can put as much load you want. Um, so if you, if you provide a lower uh, variation, you can start pushing your output capacitor, which is the third component, uh, two switches, inductor and capacitor. You can reduce it. The, the, the smaller the uh, number of capacitor, the smaller the area. And that's, that's where it really helps. So like I said, uh, this, is, this is getting a little bit more deeper into the DCM side of it. Uh, so what's DCM? Um, um, let me first introduce that uh, CCM stands for continuous conduction mode. DCM stands for discontinuous mode. And uh, in CCM, every clock cycle that you have, uh, you, you turn on the S1 and the S2 is always opposite of that, always. So 
you either turn on S1 or S2, but you are continuously switching. You don't shut down both fats ever. In, uh, in the DCM, if you see that your output voltage uh, uh, has, uh, this is your feedback, the blue line there. If your output voltage is uh, where you, you, it's above your reference, and inductor current has reached zero, you shut down even the low side fat, which is the S2. So both fats are off. How long do you keep it off? You know, well, until you really reach your, your feedback, which is your output voltage drops below your reference voltage again, that's when you're turning back. And this is, this is really helpful because now you are modulating frequency in two ways. Um, so right there, in this case, right there is where you're running um, uh, fast fre uh, uh, switching frequency, but here you, you decided not to switch. And if you have a really low current, let's just say you have a current, uh, we were doing transient from uh, 2 amps to 10 amps, correct? Let's say you had a 100 milliamp of current. Well, you could not switch for, let's say, uh, running 500 kilohertz uh, converter, and you would switch maybe every 2 kilohertz, every 3 kilohertz, whenever it's needed. Whenever you see the feedback has gone below the reference, you go turn on. You always turn on for on time, constant, and then sit there and wait for inductor current to go to zero. As soon as inductor goes to zero, you shut down the second switch and then just stay there. So <coughs> that talks about that, that um, discontinuous mode, you turn on S2 after S1 turns off, which is S2 right there, and you turn off S2 when the current goes to zero, which is right there. Right there, you get the inductor current. In this case, inductor current is high enough that you, you, you run in continuous mode. So what does the, uh, like we talk about that, here is some equation, how you can go about solving that. But it, it really reduces the switching frequency at light load. And now I'll introduce the benefit number three, which is your, which is your superior efficiency at light load. And um, here is the two example. I would, um, we collected data for 3640, which is the voltage mode, and we also collected data for 3710. Um, so this three is the power loss. This three is the um, uh, with the. Um, I will ignore the underscore CP for now, um, but just looking at this two, one is voltage mode. Uh, the green is the voltage mode, which is right there, and then you got a rate, which is um, 3710. Uh, it's a constant on time. And you can see, as you come, this is your load right there. That's your efficiency on that direction. So as, this is up to 8 amps. As you came down on the load, the voltage mode continued to drop. But the, uh, the constant on maintained the efficiency all the way up to really low current. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, like we said, it, it went into a uh, light load where it went into DCM. It's not switching as, as much as it, it only switches whenever it needs to, correct? Um, it's right there. Um, well, obviously, um, in, you can do that with voltage mode. I, I would not say that you cannot do that. It's just very hard. And uh, um, with the, with the, uh, what here it shows, if you look at back the circuit that we talk about, uh, um, this circuit here, we did not have to do anything specific in order to create that DCM, CCM transient. It just naturally happens, and that's the beauty of this uh, scheme. It does not require any IC design. Um, is specifically just to do this transition. You, you could do it in voltage mode. Uh, I've sa seen it done. And the one way to do it is you have to hold the comp below your ramp. So, you, so that comp never crosses the ramp. You never generate the PWM. But the, the disadvantage there is that when you hold, do that, um, your air amplifier design got even more complex. Because you cannot allow air amplifier to saturate. The moment you allow air amplifier to saturate, you lost your transient response. So, because comp has to react if there is a load. In this case, you don't have to worry about that. Here is exa uh, uh, showing, now uh, this, is, this is DCM, okay, and this area is a CCM. 
um, it's 100 milliamp load in this direction. We had a, um, one of the feature of 3710 was to have a switch which does CCM and DCM transition. So we left the 100 milliamp load on both direction, but you can see when, when the transition happened here, it's a smooth transition. We out didn't even budge. It's, it's, it remained the same. Your ripple remained the same. Nothing changed in the V out. It looks the same in or out of DCM. And here is CCM to DCM. The same thing, you can do it in voltage mode. It takes a lot more energy and uh, air amplifier. Uh, design gets even worse. Obviously, it's not free, constant on time. Uh, there are some challenges that uh, you have to come up um, to overcome. Um, the competitor design becomes very complex now. Um, not, I wouldn't say complex, but it, it, you need to spend a lot more time on the competitor. It requires two things. It needs to be very low offset, because now you, whatever the offset the competitor has, it's going to show up in your regulation. Let me go back here. Let's just go back to one more. This should do it. So <clears throat> here is uh, the comparator, that uh, PWM comparator. If you have an offset in this, this signal here, which I'm showing, kind of um, showing here, but if you have an offset here, your feedback voltage, which is, which is your output voltage, instead of regulating at 0.5, you're going to regulate at the whatever the offset you have in the comparator. So if you get a one, let's say one millivolt offset, which is a low offset comparator to, one millivolt is 0.2 percent. You are supposed to regulate to one percent, one percent total. So you really need a very low offset comparator. So it, that becomes difficult. The other thing about the comparator um, you have to worry about in the design is uh, it needs to be fast now. If you sense it here uh, and you don't don't turn on the uh, PWM until here, uh, if the comparator has a lot of delay going through, let's just say. 20, 30, 40, 50 nanosecond delay. Um, now, again, you created offset because your feedback signal continued to drop down and you didn't turn it on. Let's say you just turn on the PWM right there, you create another offset. It's not, uh, it, the delay uh, creates another offset because you're not turning on the PWM. So, two challenge in the comparator design. Look at some other ones. I'll talk about uh, application challenge uh, when you have uh, ceramic caps. It does not work straight out of ceramic caps. Uh, and I'll talk about that uh, a little bit. Uh, it requires special circuit to, um, for startup issues like a V out jump and inrush current. It's not that difficult. You just have to be aware of it. And as I talk about, it's a variable frequency, so may not be suitable for some applications that really needs to know what frequency your 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 input your converters are running. So, um, like telecom uh, and uh, uh, netcom applications, where they really need to know baseband, they don't want to run random frequency. They want to know exactly what frequency everything is running. So in that case. It's very hard to use this. Uh, the voltage mode is much better because then you know the, the frequency you are running at because it's constant frequency. Uh, here is an example of a, a um, low ESR application. Uh, so here in this case is a, a simulation that we, we did. We showed that if your ESR is 10 milliohm, by the way, you guys know about ESR, I assume. ESR is part of the capacitor. There's a resistor in series with the capacitor model. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it's a 10 milliohm, it's a... All right. <laughs> if it's a 10 milliohm, you can create a ripple because the uh, inductor ripple shows up in the vol of voltage across the capacitor. But if it's a 1 milliohm, the ripple looks really bad. And you could, you could basically see V out looking like that. And that's undesirable. There is a way to get uh, away from it, and it requires basically adding a ripple on your feedback pin. Basically, now you created the ripple that I was always showing. It was part of the capacitor, but now uh, I'm just going to sp speed it up a little bit. Um, the SP cap <coughs> has the SP caps. There are two types of cap, SP and ceramic. Uh, SP caps have the um, ESR. It's shown here, it's 9 milliohm. 
and it's comparing the the constant on time versus the voltage mode. Uh, same circuit, everything same, the low transient. Um, frequency increase like we talked about right there and uh, peak to peak is 85 millivolts on the voltage ripple and in this case 185 millivolts. If your frequency remain the same so your comp has to do all the work. This is a ceramic cap uh, after uh, um, improving the uh, to ceramic cap uh, uh, you needed a special circuit the three, uh, three components I talked about and it went back there. All right, so the takeaway um, on the constant on time scheme, it's simple, okay, no oscillator, no air amplifier. You also, it's easy for customer, really easy. You know, we are, we are even thinking about uh, uh, getting rid of some, some of the function, uh, additional functionality like we talk about and making a, just a one, you just give enable signal and that's it, you know, make, getting rid of a lot of complexity that I, that's in 3710 engine. Um, because you really don't, customer doesn't need to interact with anything, you know. You just give them a part and they, just, they can power it on. They don't need to design a, uh, uh, um, design a uh, compensation loop or anything. So it's really, really a huge advantage. Um, and the three other advantages we talk about is light load efficiency, fast transient response, CCM, DCM transients, it's very easy. And just be aware that there are limitations of the, the scheme. Let me give you a little bit about what the industry is up to. So we talk about, this is 3710, correct? And these are the FETs. IR does both. IR has the 3710 and the FETs business. So the IRs are putting up those together and selling in one package. So now you don't have to worry about, if you are a system designer, you don't have to worry about where to put FETs, what FETs to use, we can tell you. Just use this, it has everything you need. It's got, it's got a control, it's got a FETs, it's got a driver, all you need is right there. And it's happening at a lot of stages. Uh, I have seen, um, I've seen now applications where they have integrated inductor and capacitor into a single package, and those are called power modules. It's becoming pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Um, um, I think this is my last slide. Um, wanted to touch base on the career opportunities that we talk about, um, the things that I do, uh, what I have done in the past. Um, IR has been, um, ha had very good rotational program. About two years ago, they pulled the plug. They have reins, uh, uh, but they, have, they realized that that was a bad idea to do. Maybe it was economy at that time, but it's open. Um, all the time, so anybody can apply anytime. Um, it's, um, if you go to uh, irf.com slash career, they have, and uh, this is a design center that I am uh, residing in, and we have some local opportunity also open. So I wanted to touch base. And that's it, Q&A. <laughs>